Hi Ryan, how are you? Hi Andre, I'm good thanks, thanks for having me. Oh you're most welcome, you're most welcome. I have to say we're both speaking from the same county today which is a rarity, we're both from Essex, very proud Essex people that we are too. Tell me what's the weather like down there right now? It's actually really nice, <laughs> really nice actually yeah. So how have you been coping with the lockdown so far? Uh, okay. Um, I know that a lot of people are, uh, struggle, are struggling right now, so I'm doing fine, you know, um, itching to get out and play some tennis tournaments, but i um, doing what I can, really. And I understand some members of your family work for the NHS as well, so that means you've had to keep things ticking over. How has that been for you? Yeah, it's uh, well, not, not as hard for me as for them. I've got um, yeah, two brothers and uh, my mum work in the NHS, so me and my dad have sort of been uh, holding down the fort at home. You know, we've been cooking and cleaning and trying to, trying to make life as, as uh, easy for them as possible. So, What's your signature dish? Ooh, I've got a few in the bag, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I've actually been learning a lot from my mum over these, uh, these past few weeks, I'd have to say. I'd have to say chicken wings. Nice. Chicken wings, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So for a few of the tennis players that I've been speaking to over the last few weeks, they've had to be a bit creative with their training to keep their fitness levels up. Describe what you've been doing over the last few weeks for me. Yeah, I've definitely had to uh, switch switch some stuff up. I've been doing a ton of stuff in the garden, actually. I'm uh, um, pretty lucky I've got kind of a, a largish garden, so I've been... Uh, you know, doing some sprints and doing lots of mobility stuff. And yeah, so I've, I've had to change it up for sure. And I noticed when I was doing my prep over the weekend, you've been focusing a lot on your hand-eye coordination. It, did, were you inspired by the Roger Federer challenge? Is that what got you going? <laughs> I actually started it before, before oh, right. Roger did that. Yeah, I'm not going to take he any credit it, or anything. He stole but, it from you, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, I've been doing doing stuff against the wall you know lots of uh, voice volume stuff that I can so and from what I understand your dad is your coach how does that dynamic work uh <laughs> yeah <the dynamic. laughs> That's a good good, uh, good word to use um I'm very lucky to have my dad as my coach you know he's he's awesome but it can definitely have its ups and downs um you know as we're so close we spend so much time together it's it can do, it can be tough to you know not bring stuff from the tennis court into the the house you know we try to we try our best i think we've got better at it as uh, the years have gone on but yeah we try and keep that separate but no it's it's i'm really lucky to have my dad as my coach yeah. oh absolutely absolutely so let's start at the beginning then what made you pick up a tennis racket uh my well my dad actually so he <laughs> he um he started tennis really late um he only started playing like a lot when he in his 30s so when i was young I was about three years old um he just you know gave me a tennis racket and i started hitting a ball around and he said oh he, he noticed something like i had a bit of talent there so i just started playing more and more and then it's just taken on from them and you fell in love with the sport itself or did you think actually as you got older you think actually i'm quite good at this maybe i could do yeah that no, it's all a bit of both yeah really I was, I was playing a lot more and then i got really into it and then yeah i was like you know what it's like i love this competition and everything and that meant making some big decisions along the way didn't it because you were obviously you, as a young boy you picked up the racket and started to train with your dad but then you made a decision to go and, and train in, in France. How did that come about? Yeah, so I was in, basically I was in secondary school um, just close to me. I was in start of year nine and I'd, I'd been training around, you know, I have a centre, a couple of, couple of places I can train near me. Mm. And there just, there wasn't like the broad amount of players to play with and get better. So if I wanted to, you know, have the level that I wanted to reach, I would have had to go on somewhere. It could have been in England somewhere, but um, we happened to come across this academy in uh, in France and tried it out for a little bit. And I 
loved it. And my parent, my dad was like, oh, it's like, if you want to go over there, then uh, you can. And I was like, you That's know what, I'll, I'll give it a go. How's your French now? Uh, yeah, I, I, learned, I had to learn to speak it because uh, there wasn't that many English uh, speaking people there. So to get to have some friends, I, I definitely had to learn the language. So it's, it's OK. Yeah. So what age were you when you moved to France? I was 13. So a teenager, mm -hmm. all that stuff going on as a teenager, being in another country, training. What was the, how was the culture for you over there? Yeah, it's big culture shock, really. Um, yeah, uh, being that young, you know, you sort of take everything in yeah. at the time. You know, it's just pretty easy to take it in. But yeah, I, I remember I would come back to England every like half term or every six weeks. And I'd see my friends from school and they'd notice little things that I'd, I'd pick up. I, I had no idea. And they'd be like, oh, you're saying that really, really weird. And I was like, oh, OK. I just I didn't know this, but yeah, it must have changed. So you spent a few years in France and then came another monumental decision about going to the States. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? So, you, you know, England first, then France and then the States. Tell me about it. Yeah. Um, so the academy that I was at, they had this, basically their main program was to send off their players to American universities. Because the the head the head guy that owned it, Charles Orfer, he he actually went to American University, so he was a big advocate for it. He was all for it. So I didn't know that much about um, American University, like playing tennis over there. So I was getting sort of these messages from college coaches um, on Facebook and stuff, and I I didn't really know whether to what to do with them. Um, so then I started talking to a few of the messages um, and then I ended up talking to the University of Memphis, uh, Chris Dower, uh, my coach. Um, yeah, and we just started talking. He said, you know what, come, come and check it out. Come on a, or, on a recruit trip. And I, just, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go and look at it for sure. <laughs> I'll go to America, have, have a little look. And then so I went with my dad and we looked at it, chatted to them and just loved it, loved what they had to offer and uh, fell in love with the place, the people and it was just, yeah, so I decided to go there. And that was Memphis, Tennessee, is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. another culture shock for you. <laughs> another, another huge culture shock. <laughs> in yeah, what life, way? Life is way different there. In, uh, in what way? The people, probably the biggest thing. Um, they're, I mean, they're super nice. They're so nice. Everyone there is so nice. Uh, the South, you know, the South America is just a little different to New York and everything up north. But yeah, um, and the food was a huge, was a big shock as well. <laughs> the portions, well, the portions are twice the size. Yeah, I can imagine. And as a tennis player, obviously, maintaining your diet is what is one of the biggest things in the sport yeah. of course yeah being an american they got huge portions i can imagine that was quite a challenge for you ryan yeah some some serious self-control was needed <laughs> <laughs> how long were you out in the states for uh so i spent just over four years because um i took a semester off to play try and play professionally to see what it was like see if it was something i, I really wanted to do after i graduated um so i had to make that up at the end of the my four years so yeah that's interesting why did you decide to take that break um well it was something i discussed with uh, my head coach paul gogel um me and my teammate andrew watson fellow englishman um we we always had in our mind sort of the goal of playing professional tennis so we just wanted to you know he, he said you have this opportunity this for this semester because there was no team matches then in the fall semester so he was like you know what you guys can try it um, you can go and play for six months play professionally and just see if you if you like it basically if it's something you want to do yeah so we were like we both talked to each other decided to travel around together because 
a lot easier if you do that. And um, yeah, we both we both liked it, and we both decided to do it straight after we graduated. You've done so much in your 24 years, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, picks up a racket, age three, age 13, goes to France, spends a few years mm. in, in France, and then and they head over to the States. But there is something also that is running underneath all that, is that you, as a baby, were diagnosed with a, a, Pretty rare, much, yeah. Yeah, with a rare form of cancer, which you've now, obviously, you've recovered from, and what, and, and what have you. <clears throat> Do you see that in terms of the way I've just given like a quick timeline of your life, how the journey that you've been on over the last few years or so to today, does, has that formed your thinking and in, in, in your drive to be the best tennis player that you can be? Yeah, I think, I think definitely it has. Um, I just look at it, you know, sometimes as being very, very lucky to be here. Um, you know, it could have gone a lot, a lot worse. Um, but yeah, so I, I kind of take that in my stride and I just try and do the best I can because, you know, I'm very lucky to have um, the opportunity to, to do all these things. Yeah. And you talk about opportunity. Last year was a, a massive year for you in terms of being out yeah. on, on the tour and what have you. And then obviously, as we come into 2020, early part of 2020, everything comes to a grinding halt. How did you manage your mindset for that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, last year was a uh, was definitely chock a block. Um, it was my first full year, but so I, I mean, I had a lot of you know goals that I wanted to achieve this year that I'd set, and uh, it's just a uh, you know, it's it's another challenge basically. I, I kind of see it as it's another just a, a block in the road, really. I mean, not much. I mean, not much you, we can do about it. I'd say the only thing you can really do right now is just try and stay as focused as you can and, you know, still try and practice hard. Was it another culture shock being on the tour for a year? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, it, I didn't realise how kind of tired and exhausting it all is when, you, when you're on the road for maybe six weeks in a row. I, in my head, I was like, you know what, making my schedule, I was like, oh, I can play this tournament, uh, that one, I'll play three more. And that, uh, when you're doing it, at the end of it, you're like, like, I really need to get back home and, you know, get some rest. And what did you learn about yourself when you were away on tour? Uh, well, a lot of things. You've got a lot, of, a lot of time to spend sort of on your own. So you definitely get to get to know yourself a lot more. Um, get to know sort of what what people you kind of want to hang out with yeah you, who, who you you want your friends to be really and what was the thing that you're working on in terms of your playing style before the pandemic drew everything to a, a stop uh i had a couple things that I, I, i've been working on definitely i think um off the court i was trying to get you know stronger and making my physical side better, trying to get more mobile and stuff. Um, but on the court, yeah, I definitely had some some things, like um, some different point sort of style things that I was working on. You're a left-handed player, and there's there's this lefty club, as you call it. Um, let me give some names. Obviously, yeah. the most famous person of all in, today's, in terms of today is obviously Rafael Nadal, and he's naturally right-handed, plays with his left. Angelique Kerber, um, who else? Uh, Petra Kvitova as well, mm -hmm. and Kalina Pliskova, who has, I believe, one of the best serves in the men's and the women's game for sure. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in in this thinking that left hand players give right hand players all kinds of trouble on the court? Completely. <laughs> 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 Completely agree. Yeah. Uh, um, look, don't give away any trade secrets, but if, you know, give us a bit of a taster. I mean, the, I think the biggest one's got to be the lefty serve. Yeah. But it's just a different ball, you know, coming. People aren't really used to it. Because for me, I mean, myself, I used to really like not like playing left-handers at all. It, it sounds funny coming from me, but like, yeah, lefties, some lefties don't, don't like playing other lefties. Um, just because it's a, it's a different ball, you know. You, so you get so used to right-handers and how they play. 
and then you can out you have to start changing all your patterns just because of a left hander but i was i was lucky in a at memphis so we had a, a left hander which should kill manji um and i got to practice with him for for four years so i actually started to really like playing against left handers after that <laughs> <laughs> and I really loved what you just said then about uh, as a left-handed player, I didn't like playing fellow left-handed players. That's because you could, you could, oh, I hated it. Yeah, yeah, you can figure each other out quite quickly in, in that respect. Yeah. With right-hander, it's a bit more more difficult. And you've talked about that tennis is a game of chess, which I completely mm -hmm. agree with. Uh, figuring out your opponent also. Again, without giving away any trade secrets, how long does it take you to figure out an opponent when you're on court? Um, I say it definitely depends on if you know them. Um, I say if if you've seen them play before, if you know them well, then you've kind of already, you, you should have already kind of figured them out. Um, you should already have sort of a game plan that you want to go into the match and try and stick to. Um, but if you don't know them at all, which is which is kind of rare when you the higher you get. Um, but yeah, if you if you don't know them at all, then I'd say maybe maybe a, a few games a couple games and what do you need to do to rise up the ranks do you think uh i definitely i've got some stuff i need to work on and to improve them um i think the mental side is a big big part of tennis um not that many people you know concentrate as much um but yeah i think i need to improve on some things there and then i think i could take it further it's funny that you mentioned about the mental side of the game. That's the one common thread with when I've been talking to your fellow compadres out there that mm. the mental side of the game is so important in tennis. And we tend to forget if it's a men's match and it's a best of five, you know, that could be five hours on court where you're having to be yeah. really, really dialed in into a mm. game. It's, um, it's a fascinating part. So how do you manage that mental side after a match do you take some time out do some meditation read a book how do you manage that side of things i think i think reading is actually a really good one um i've actually, i've started doing a bit of yoga and i find that that's actually helped a fair amount you know just the, you know the calmness and just focusing and you know seeing visualizing a little bit so i find that helps quite a bit and outside of tennis what do you like? Are you a football fan? Any fan of any other sport? Uh, I'm a football fan. Not not a huge, not like uh, everyone around me. My brother's a big football fan, but yeah, not 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 as big as everyone else in England. But I like I like a range of, of things really. Um, I, I like my music. Um, yeah, I like I like games and stuff. So, are you Xbox or PS4? Actually, PC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, game more of a like, my game knowledge is like this, like zero. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to. Well, I used to. I used to have an Xbox. I used to play my mates. Um, I play some on the PS uh, on the PC. You know. We mentioned your family right at the beginning because, uh, like me, I I come from a, a Caribbean heritage. You come from a Malaysian mm. heritage. We were both born here. Have you had the chance to visit Malaysia at all? Actually. I went a lot when I was younger, my, me and my family went, and we used to go almost every two years. Um, and then we didn't go back for 16 years until this February. We finally got to go back and it, it was, well, my, one of my brothers um, didn't get to go because he, he had some work, unfortunately. But yeah, no, we, we got to go back and it was amazing. You know, just to see like the whole side of the family again. It was, it was really cool. What's the tennis scene like out there? Um, there isn't there isn't a huge tennis scene really, sadly. But um, I they've got a lot of clubs. I managed to hit with a few local players. But um, I was going to ask you about yeah, it. Did you get a chance to do that. Yeah, yeah, I did actually. I, I just, me and my dad just went to like a, a local club, and we got talking to a few of them, and um, they put us in touch with someone else, and. They, their kids played so I just had a had a hit with them and they were super super nice people. Does your dad ever give you a day off? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah if it was up to him no but um, sometimes I'm like yeah you know what I, I need I need to stay off. I, I like to take my uh, 
my Saturdays off because uh, you know my my family usually are off work, my mum's off work, so it's nice. And have they ever come to see you play as well, your family? Yeah, yeah, they have. They they came a lot more when I was younger, um, you know, because we used to sometimes I used to have tournaments on the weekends, you know, the uh, the LTA tournaments and stuff. So, but yeah, as I've gotten older, you know, I've had to go to a bit further places. So unfortunately, they they can't come to all of those. Yeah, because the, the travel costs, are, I'm sure, are just astronomical yeah. for you. Yeah. But even for family members to come and see you play now abroad, that's also something that's got to be thought about. So let's talk exactly. about, you know, in terms of the rest of the year, if things, mm. if the travel restrictions are lifted and the, the pandemic hopefully passes over the next few months, can you give us a rough idea of what your plans are going to be? Um. You say until when the tournaments start again, or yeah, if the tournaments start late, would you want to? Would you like to play for the rest of the year, or are you thinking this year's done and you're going to focus on 2021? Um, it's a tough one, really. It's it's a tough one on what on what they decide. Um, I mean, I personally would I want to get out, back out there as, as soon as I can. <laughs> I mean, there's already two and that two months, two and a half months is is it's tough, but um, yeah. I would love to get out there, but it, it all depends on, you know, the safety and the logistics of all the tournaments. If if they've got to put the people's safety first and and health, which which makes sense. Um, so yeah, but if it if it was up to me and everyone was safe, I would be out there as soon as possible. And what's your your ultimate goal for you as a tennis player? I would love to play Wimbledon, main draw Wimbledon, and uh, and try and make it in the top 100 that would be that'd be awesome well ryan i wish you all the best thank you so much for talking to me stay away from the beach today <laughs> <laughs> i will i will I, I hope everyone else stays away as well <laughs> it's been fantastic talking to you thanks for your time really enjoyed it and i uh, hope to see you on a court real soon yeah thanks for having me Amory. cool i will press stop